Hi guys, Ronnie here. I just got these 202 Firecrest carbon clinchers today for one of my customers. And to be honest, uh, these wheels got me thinking quite a bit because I find it quite hard to justify a very, very shallow set of carbon wheels like this ones. But more on that later. First, I'm going to show you what you get with a pair of these wheels. It's pretty much standard issue Zip Firecrest package. So you don't really get too much, but everything you need. So you get the Tangenti brake pads, which are excellent. And you get the rim tape and the skewer, which are not that excellent, but will do the job. And surprisingly, you also get a little very short valve extender right there, although I think uh, at this 32 mil drap, uh, depth, sorry, most uh, tubes are going to fit there, no problem. So, yeah, this is what you get. This is the 2017 model, so it gets Zips 77, 177 hub set. I have ridden and owned a 303 Firecrest set, which I still had the 88 and 188 hubs. Now these are a bit different, a bit heavier build, but they appear to be uh, nicely machined, but very very simple looking and I think it's more of a cost saving measure but what I like about them is they seem to have much quicker and very quick indeed uh, free hub engagement so I really like that should be a good snappy wheel set my cyclocross wheels are going to have the same hub so I'm happy about that not too noisy either and the free hub body itself appears to be made of a quite hard alloy and they lack the preload adjustment which I think is great because you have factory set preload and you don't need to worry uh, too much about it. In my previous 303s uh, the preload was quite tricky to adjust in the rear because if you tighten it really hard you don't have any play but then the bearings are not running overly smooth and if you loosen it up then you always have a little bit of play but these are super smooth with no play in there so should work like a treat uh, the rim itself not as wide as other zip wheels just 25 mil in width and 17 internal but that's still pretty wide pretty modern now bear in mind that only the clinchers have these newer more modern firecrest profile the tubular versions which are much much lighter surprisingly uh, there is a big difference in there have the traditional v-shape uh, albeit with the golf ball dimple design now the 202s uh, are a bit different from the rest of the firecrest range because they have a higher temperature resin which for some reason is also uh, on the disc so it should resist uh, the downhill braking you get from basically descending mountains which this uh, climbing wheel set is but the part that got me thinking of the customer said look I want these 202s because they only weigh 1450 grams I said okay but well if you look at my bike these are 4.5s or the zip 454s I have in the box somewhere over there weigh just 100 grams more and they are a lot lot deeper and a lot lot faster in a straight line and on the descents and on the flats so what is 100 grams going to give you anyway? 
And that's the point where I started questioning the well, the need basically for these very shallow so-called climbing wheels because okay these are going to be quite arrow because they have this nice little profile to them and 32 mil is not super duper shallow like Durace C24s for example which have no air advantage but still I don't know if you well I did quite a lot of races, racing uh, this year and uh, let me put it this way I always wanted to have low gears on my bike uh, so I can spin but it turns out at the level these guys are riding you can't use these low gears any, anywhere because you're going to get dropped you have to really push the pace and I don't think there were too many climbs where the climbing speed was below 20 k per hour and from let's say 16 to 20 k per hour onwards I think you're better off with a deeper wheel like mid-depth something 4.5 or 4.54, 4.04 anything like that that's let's say 100 grams heavier but you do get a lot a lot more air advantage than well it's basically the, the rim depth is basically doubled at that point for really really just a little weight penalty so yeah I think the use for these is, is quite limited now when you okay there might be a tiny bit faster on a super steep super hard super draggy climb when you're not that fast of a climber or the climb is very long on a summit finish okay but outside from that I don't know when descending the guy or anyone on a deeper set of wheels is going to be blazing past you on the downhills and they're also going to have safer braking as well because you have much more material in the deeper rim to transfer the heat away from the brake track so in the wind maybe you would say that these are going to be super stable in the wind and I agree yes but my weight is very low around 60 kilometers per hour and I haven't experienced a day windy enough to not be able to ride a mid-depth wheel set like the 303s, like the 454s or the, or the 4.5s and as I said at higher climbing speeds those wheels I reckon are going to easily easily bring up that weight uh, penalty which is very slight indeed now another thing I would point out would be the stiffness because obviously you may have with a wheel like this you have much more spoke much less rim and obviously a carbon fiber laminate in the rim is going to be much stiffer than than the spokes so there's going to be some lateral uh, movement in there for sure brake rub and so on which I think again a deeper rim might uh, be much less of an issue but then as I was thinking about it I have found one uh, very good use for these wheels so apart from let's say a summit finish where you need that reactivity that explosiveness uh, blah 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 I, I don't know I think these are just feelings and feelings are not going to make you fast but let's say yes these wheel, wheels do work over there but female riders yeah that's what came to my mind female riders who could weigh as low as let's say 45 kilos very light even compared to me not very uh, skillful in bike, bike handling and in gusty conditions I think these will be a good choice for someone like that now <clears throat> yeah this is the wheel that basically started this uh, debate in my head but then I looked at some other options as well you may say that uh, the MV 2.2s are much lighter than these which they are so there's going to be more of a weight advantage on the climbs but then again they cost twice as much so uh, not really a good deal in my mind for a very very limited range of views and then I have also looked at the 202 NSWs 
which seemed okay because they are lighter than these, but then I have looked at the 303 NSWs, which are only 40 grams heavier than the 202 NSWs, and 40 grams is not going to make up uh, for that. Well, basically more than one centimeter of rim depth and rim width also because. 303s are nice and wide, so they will ride better, last longer, be better with bigger tires, and so on, and so on, and so on. So, yeah, shallow carbon clinchers, or carbon wheels for that matter. You may say, yes, tubulars are going to be super light at this depth, but even less aero. So, shallow carbon wheels, not really a good choice in my book, definitely not for me. Although there might be some people who can get really, really good use of them, as I have mentioned. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is my take on shallow carbon wheels. If you have your own thoughts or some uh, good ideas for these, then don't forget to put uh, co your comments in the comment section down below. And if you'd like to see more about my bike gear, then don't forget to tune into my channel and subscribe. It's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time.